Hey there crewmates, how's it going? It's Miff Crew here. My name is Luke and today we are going to be doing a tutorial series on how to use Source Filmmaker. I have animated using Source Filmmaker for around 8 years at this point. I am mostly known for my Baby Foxy animations using Source Filmmaker which you can also find on my channel. So I thought, why not make a beginner's guide on how to use Source Filmmaker. This is going to be a very basic introduction, uh, just to get you started so you know everything that you need to when creating your Source Filmmaker animations. I will divide the series up into multiple videos. In this series we are going to cover how to load up a map, import a character, animate the character, so make the move, do the lighting so you can actually see the character properly. We'll also be looking at setting up the camera as well. I know that some of you might be here just for animations and if you want to that is totally fine. You can like skip forward. However, I think it's important to get some of the basic setup first because otherwise you might skip ahead and you might not know what to do. You might encounter an issue perhaps. I've done it before, that is totally fine, so that's why I want to have an animation video as its separate episode, but in this part I'm going to be covering how to create your first project, load up a map, uh, which is an environment, and how to load in your first ever character. Let's get right into it. So, the first time that you launch Source Filmmaker, you are going to see a screen that looks more or less or even exactly <laughs> like this. At the top here, this allows you to give the name of what your project is going to be, so the file name. In this case, I'm just, I just called it example. Uh, you can like uh, simply uh, just click on it and uh, type to call it whatever you want. So, uh, but yeah, in this case, I'm calling it example. Uh, right underneath, we have something called the file directory. And we have a couple of buttons next to it. We have browse and create. So if we were to hit browse, we get to choose where we would like to save our project, basically. And by default, I think Source Filmmaker loads up in this little folder here called elements, really. And you will see two folders. You will see renders and see and sessions. Um, I think by default, your Source Filmmaker project files are usually in sessions, so if you double click on that, you can either have your file be created here, uh, or you could create a new folder by um, hitting uh, this little button up here called Create New Folder, and you can call it uh, what you want, basically. Uh, that is up to you what you call it. Um, in my case, though, I actually, oops, I actually created a a folder for this series in particular called tutorial. Um, so if I were to double click on my tutorial folder in this case, and if I was to hit the choose button down here, then we now in effect have our file location set up on where we would like our project to save to really. So that's fantastic. We've given it a name, we've given it a file location. Now we're, there's only one more thing we're going to want to do actually before we hit this fresh Shiny create button. It's not that fresh and shiny. It looks exactly the same as all the other buttons to be fair But um, yeah, we have covered um, uh, What what name does which is uh, setting the file name uh, what directory does which is setting your file location And then there's only one more part in this new session section uh, That we haven't covered yet, and that is the frame rate uh, Which is also known as frames per second FPS you, you may have heard of it before but uh, basically what this does is that if you click on here, we see a bunch of these random, seemingly random looking numbers. Now, when it comes to animations, the normal frame rate for an animation to be is roughly around 24 to 30 frames per second. I'd advise going uh, between that range, at least when you're getting started. You can technically go higher all the way up to... Uh, 60 frames per second if you want to, or even 72 actually, which oh, 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 that's uh, that's uh, higher than 60, that's that, that's for sure. Um, I guess in theory, like the higher the frame rate is, the, the smoother the animation would be. Um, but you know, like smoother in animation, it isn't all about frame rates, and um, and like I mentioned as well, like when it comes to animations that are still being produced today, the average range of frame rates is 24 to 30. Honestly, I've been animating on YouTube for years now, and pretty much every single Source Filmmaker project I have made, 
I have left it the default frame rate, which is 24 frames per second. So I'm going to go for that. And yeah, that's basically it for setting up. We can go to, um, we can cover these things as well. So we have open recent, uh, open and uh, more information on the internet, like YouTube. Open recent uh, basically has a little drop down menu next to it. And these are all of uh, the recent projects that you have uh, worked on or that you have opened. So anytime you open a project file, um, then it will uh, show here basically. Uh, um, right below this we have uh, something that's instead of saying open recent it says open and if you click on that then we basically just get to choose where we open up our um, our project file really in order to like load it up let's say if I saved my file then we will see something called example because this is what I named my file name basically is example okay so we have given our file a name we have chosen where we are going to save it and we have set the frame rate for our project all we got to do now is hit the create button and we would have set up our first project in Source Filmmaker. So the setup screen closed on me before I hit the create button. And I am now presented with text saying no session. If this happens to you, here's what to do. Source Filmmaker did a Source Filmmaker. You're going to want to go up to file new and then simply just hit create. And now it says no map loaded. But yeah, as soon as you hit create, whether it's from the startup screen or whether it's from the um, going, uh, simply doing file new, then you will always see this blank space here that says no map loaded. So now what do we want to do here? Well, I want to kind of give you a basic rundown of the user interface, so to speak. So um, this uh, in entire blank space right here where my mouse is, is called the primary viewport. We can tell that this is the primary viewport because um, right up here, like right above it, we see something called primary viewport. And this is uh, highlighted. And the reason why it's highlighted is because this is the tab that we are currently in. If we went to the tab next to it called console, then uh, this would bring us to the console tab. And you know, honestly, I, I rarely use um, the console. Like the only thing, time I use the console is if I wanted to uh, set the eye size of characters so if we uh, type in uh, r underscore eye size zero then that will set the um, uh, eye size of certain characters not all characters mind you but certain characters to their default size if I set it to four like I have it for my uh, baby foxy animations uh, which is uh, an animated series I have using Source Filmmaker on my channel uh, for those who didn't know then um uh, then uh, I want to go for that, but in this case I want it to be zero set to its default value and uh, If I had the models loaded up, then I simply just hit the play button and then the pause button for it to like refresh uh, And that should be good. And I'm, I'm kind of jumping a little bit too far ahead here <laughs> Let's take one thing at a time. So yeah primary viewport tab is what it wants to be in and it should say It should have this big red text in it saying no map loaded now um, if we were to right click in the viewport then it will give us a few basic options uh, in this case we want to hit on a little button at the bottom of this menu that says load map dot 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 so if we were to left click load map then we will be presented with a screen that looks a little bit like this really now we have a, a few things going on here we have uh, the mod, which basically means uh, the theme, basically underneath the uh, mod right here, we have uh, a couple. Of, we have a few things. We have user mod, uh, TF movies, uh, TF. This is basically, like I mentioned, the theme. So Team TF, for those who don't know, stands for a video game called Team Fortress, and this is what you are going to be given uh, right off the bat. By default, you will be given uh, two themes, I guess, so to speak. Uh, TF movies and uh, TF. I think at least it's been a while. You may notice some other ones as well, and that's just because I have some more themes installed. So the user mod uh, is things that I've either created myself, but they are mostly content that I've gotten from like, other sources that's not Source film Filmmaker. So it's mostly Gary's mod content that I've ported over to Source Filmmaker. Um, and Workshop is something that you're going to see when you start uh, subscribing to content that people have made for you to use in Source Filmmaker. The add-ons, basically. So if you wanted to have Final Fantasy Freddy's uh, characters or environments, let's say, then that would be uh, a Fine Arts of Freddy's workshop item. 
I will cover these in separate videos later on in the series. But for now, I'll stick with the default ones that you will see on screen. What exactly is a map? <laughs> I might have wanted to have started with that. Uh, a map is basically an environment. So if you wanted a map of Freddy Fazbear's Pizzeria, let's say for instance, uh, which is uh, a location in the video game franchise called Five Nights at Freddy's, then you would want to load up a Five Nights at Freddy's map. Uh, like I mentioned, map is known as environment, so Fancy Freddy's map, environment, it's it's the same thing, basically. But yeah, let's actually load up our first map. Uh, we can load up any map, it doesn't really matter what map you load up. One more thing I want to quickly mention is that you also have mod filter, which again, mod means theme, so if you were to click on this, it's currently set to all mods, but I can filter it for it to only be a, a like a specific thing, so uh, again, in your case, you probably either have TF, uh, and TF movies really. Uh, in my case, I think I'm actually going to go for TF because I want to load up one of the environments just so we can follow along exactly and just so I can show you exactly what it's going to look like on your screen. So uh, you could type in a particular map if you wanted a particular map, let's say the Badlands for instance, but in this case I'm just going to load up any map. Um, so yeah, I mean the Badlands is fine. If you want to uh, select the map as well, you just simply left click on the map you want and it would go yellow. So when it goes yellow, that's it basically means that it's selected. So yeah, I'm going to click on Arena Badlands and if I was to hit open, um, once I have selected my map, then uh, the red text will go from no map loaded to loading map. So that's how we know that we are, are like in the process of loading a map. It does take a while. Uh, like I mentioned earlier, a source will make it, it can be a bit slow with certain things, but um, it might even crash a few times as well. It it's crashed on me more times than I can count, trust me. But, um, yeah, I think as long as you just don't uh, click any buttons, like anything on your keyboard or your mouse, let's say, then you should be fine. Uh, if it does crash, though, to just launch it. And you could try either loading up the map again or a different map just to be safe if you want to. So, yeah, I'm just going to cut ahead to when it has loaded up. <laughs> so, we have loaded in the map. How do we look around this map? Because we can't really see a whole lot at the moment. We can only see rocks and uh, a concrete floor uh, in this example uh, map that I'm using for this tutorial. If I was to like left click and hold in the primary viewport, then uh, and if I was to like drag my mouse around, so we can actually look around the environment. So that's pretty neat. Um, okay, so it's nice that we can look around, but. Uh, what if you wanted to move? Let's say if you wanted to go and see what's uh, through that door over there, for instance. Well, they're basically the same as um, as movement keys would typically be in a video game, like a first-person shooter, for instance. Um, and for those who don't play a lot of video games, that's fine. I'll show you the controls. So if you hold down the left mouse button uh, and then uh, hold down the W button, the W uh, button on your keyboard allows you to go forward, basically. So... Uh, we can kind of like go forward while looking around and that's kind of like how we navigate. We can also go left as well by holding down the A key. We can go right by holding down the D key. And we can go backwards by holding down the S key. And that's basically all you need to know. Uh, you can also go up and down as well by holding down the Z key which will take you go up, which will make you go up. And if you hold down the X key then that will take us downwards. There's only one more thing I want to quickly cover is that if you're moving in any direction and you hold down the shift button your camera will go a lot faster as we can see here and uh, so something that's good to know. I don't really use it a whole lot uh, and if we were to uh, move while holding down the control key that will make us go a lot slower which is something that I would definitely use because it's a lot more precise than just flying around like a maniac but I mean, hey, there's like a big map you're in that say, and you want to navigate fast, and it's, it's an option that's there. There's only one other thing I want to show you in terms of controls, and that's if you hold down the Alt button on your keyboard, and this is for Windows, by the way, I'm, uh, I'm, um, I'm using. But yeah, if you hold down the Alt button on your keyboard, and then uh, left click and drag, then you can actually kind of like pan around uh, a little bit instead of just look around. It looks much the same at this point, but... Um, uh, if you were like focused in on like uh, a mod on like a character, let's say perhaps, and you were like anywhere to pan around them, it would be uh, much more convenient for navigating around the model. Um, okay, so 
Great, so this is nice. We have our environment loaded up, but let's say we wanted to actually like load in uh, a character, let's say. Uh, what should we do if we were to load in a character? Like, how do we do that? So, anytime you want to add something in Source Filmmaker, whether it's a uh, whether it's a character or uh, or an object, let's say, let's say like a tennis ball, perhaps, or a tennis racket. That is something called a 3D model. Um, we know it's a 3D model because we are using, uh, in effect, 3D software to create a 3D animation. If you picture 2D, you'll be only be able to make the characters and items on the screen go left and right, unless you were to like a, uh, create an illusion to make it look like they're walking towards the camera or away from the camera. But uh, with 3D, uh, we can actually make it. Uh, we can actually make the character go left, right, backwards, and forwards. Really. Is a very basic uh, overview, I guess, the difference between uh, 2D and 3D. Don't worry if you don't understand that. I didn't fully get it when I started out in 3D, but I did learn how to make animations, so you know it's it's fine. Don't worry if you don't get it straight away. Um, but yeah, anytime we want to add something in Source Filmmaker, uh, we would do so through this little plus button in the corner, uh, which is underneath the tab called Animation Set Editor. Yeah, if we were to like left click on this, and uh, it also say Add. Then we have a few options to add, uh, and anytime you want to add something, like I mentioned, it would be uh, it would be right here under the plus bar. So we can add camera, we can add a camera, we can add a light, we can add a particle as well. But for now, we just want to add a model. And anytime you're importing something, uh, you're importing something into a 3D program, whether it's a character or uh, or an item. More often than not, it's going to be called a model as well. There might be certain times where it's called a particle system, but those are usually a little bit more complicated than your box standard model. But for the most part, it's going to be a 3D model. So uh, if you uh, click uh, Create Animation Set for New Model, uh, then we will be presented with a very uh, similar screen. So we have uh, Mods, which is uh, which uh, again means theme. And this time, you should have something on your screen called half -Life, uh like HL2 as well, which stands for a video game called Half-Life 2. So by default, you will have access to TF models and Half-Life models. And much like uh, the map, you can also choose your filter as well. Uh, one thing I forgot to mention as well is that um, we have something up here called MDL files. And I'm going to be honest, I don't actually use this a whole lot. I'm not entirely sure what exactly it does, but... Um, uh, but this seems to be like a form of filtering. So in this case, uh, I, I think this might be like uh, an artist whose uh, model I subscribe to. And I guess that's basically what it is. It's like if you're using someone's content in Source Filmmaker, then I guess this would be a way that you can like filter for certain artists. So in this case, I'm using Andy Hawk as an example. If I were to hit the plus button, we have something called TikTok. Uh, again, I don't really use this a whole lot, uh, but if you find yourself that you're a bit stuck in uh, these filters, let's say, then uh, so simply hit MDL files and it will show you every single MDL file. Uh, so yeah, uh, we can uh, either search for a character, like like I mentioned, or we can uh, simply just browse through the options. One thing I was noticing when I was first starting with Source Filmmaker is that by default, uh, check subfolders for files uh, should be checkbots, but if not as many models are loading up for some reason, then it might be because this are this is unchecked, and this will actually a uh, won't load every single uh, model that there is because it's not checking the subfolders which also contain models. So you gotta want to make sure that this is checked as well in order to ensure that every single model that is available to you is appearing. Uh, that should be that really. So I think in this case, I am gonna just stick with um. Uh, models that you'll be presented with right from the get-go. In this case, I'm just going to load up a human model. You can find this by filtering it for HL2 and scrolling down until you see human male. Or you can just type in human male into the search box and it will give you all of the standard human models that it has. I'm just going to choose one that I like or looks the least objectionable. Left click on it and then I'll click open. I think that base pretty much concludes the first part of my SFM tutorial basics. Like I mentioned, this is only part one. I think in the next episode, like I plan on covering how to set up the camera and how to position 
a character as well so we, we will be positioning this character right here maybe getting a bit of a pose things like that really but yeah either way that is pretty much all for now thank you for watching it's mythical here my name is luke and i'll be back with more videos coming soon goodbye crewmates Thank you.